Good morning. I'm Clayne White. I'm an associate professor at the University of Washington, and I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Seattle Children's Hospital. Femoral acetabular impingement is an extremely common uh, condition, particularly in young adolescent girls, and today I will be discussing an overview of the diagnosis and the treatment of this disorder. Femoral acetabular impingement, the basics. Femoral acetabular impingement, or FAI, is a repetitive use injury of the hip. It is, so, it is typically associated with hyperflexion of the hip, as shown here. And it is a common source of hip pain in the adolescent, particularly the adolescent female. Femoral acetabular impingement is also associated with an increased risk of degenerative arthrosis later on in life, and as such, has significant economic implications for our society. There are four major components of femoral acetabular impingement that one should be aware of. Firstly, femoral acetabular impingement is associated with an abnormal morphology of the femoral head and the acetabulum. It is almost, also, almost always associated with a, with a vigorous supraphysiologic motion of the hip. And of course, as a repetitive use injury, is repetitive motion of the hip. And in the end, <clears throat> these findings result in soft tissue damage of the, of the hip, particularly the cartilage and more um, significantly, the labrum. Diagnosis of femoral acetabular impingement is typically performed through several findings, although none are, so, are especially specific. Femoral acetabular impingement is associated with groin pain and also what is known as the C sign. The C sign is described by taking your hand and making the letter C out of it putting it on the side of your hip, just above the greater trochanter. And pain in this area is very much associated with femoral acetabular impingement. Pain with femoral acetabular impingement is typically activity related, but can be much more severe when associated with a labral tear, to the point that patients who have labral tears associated with their femoral acetabular impingement find it difficult to even sit on the examination table. Provocative uh, testing for femoral acetabular impingement can be performed by flexing the hip to about 90 to 100 degrees, internally rotating it, and adducting the hip. And that results in either groin pain or pain such as is found in the C sign. But most importantly, it reproduces the symptoms that the patient has. Moving on to radiographic evaluation, femoral acetabular impingement, particularly when it is associated with acetabular over uh, coverage, is represented by the crossover sign. The crossover sign is described as the anterior wall of the acetabulum falling more towards the foot than the posterior uh, column, or the posterior wall. It's drawn nicely here as a figure of eight, where the anterior wall again sits lower than the posterior wall. This is associated with a condition that we would call pincer impingement. Again shown a normal hip here where the anterior wall sits above the posterior wall, so this would be a normal hip, and the abnormal hip here where the anterior wall again forms that figure of eight and sits lo below the posterior wall. Another way to objectively decide whether the, uh, the um, crossover sign is truly um, clinically important would be to, dis to measure the amount of crossover compared to the total length of the acetabulum. Re papers have suggested that this crossover sign should be at least one-third of the length of the, of the, of the acetabular width as described here. On the femoral side, what's, uh, the femoral head shape in femoral acetabular impingement has been described what's known as a cam deformity which represents a flattening of the anterior aspect of the femoral head and neck shaft junction. I'm sorry, the femoral head and neck junction. And commonly there can be a small bump there as well. The first way to measure this, measure this um, objectively is through what's called an alpha angle. And what this measures is a line drawn halfway through the femoral head at the narrowest aspect of the femoral neck, and then a line that that starts from the center of the femoral head and stops where the roundness 
of the femoral head ends. So one draws a perfect circle around the femoral head and where that circle then deviates from the bony abnormality um, makes the second line of the alpha angle. So a larger alpha angle means that there would be less roundness to the femoral head and as such alpha angles greater than 63 degrees have been considered abnormal. The other way to measure cam deformity would be through head neck offset as shown here. A decrease in the, in the uh, position of the top of the femoral head and the anterior aspect of the femoral neck results in a decreased head neck offset and as one would, uh, would, one would figure that less head neck offset results in a greater possibility for that neck or that top of that femoral head to impinge on the rim of the acetabulum. So abnormal head neck offset has been described as a head neck offset of less than 8 millimeters or a ratio of the, of the of the head neck offset to the, to the width of the femoral uh, head of less than 0 0.17. As in most conditions in orthopedic surgery, we always start with non-operative management. Like most other repetitive uh, use injuries, activity restriction is a mainstay of care. We also can try physical therapy. This may treat mimicking sources of pain such as an iliopsoas bursitis. But I think more importantly, it buys time and allows the patient to rest and recover from their repetitive use injury. There may be some stiffness or other uh, problems associated with FAI, and as such, uh, physical therapy may help there as well. Of course, uh, symptomatic treatment with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen or naproxen can be useful. And in the absence of response to any of these above listed items, an intraarticular injection of corticosteroid may prove beneficial. In addition to being um, therapeutic, it may help in the diagnosis as, a, as one can add a local anesthetic to the injection, which would then help determine whether the source of pain was truly intraarticular, which is what one would expect in a femoral acetabular impingement scenario. Once, if one fails non-operative management, then surgical treatment has been very successful. It consists of treating the deformities that are present in femoral acetabular impingement. So in the, in the uh, case of femoral head um, deformity, one would perform a he femoral head osteoplasty, as shown here. In this 15-year-old girl who had had a previous slipped capital femoral epiphysis, one can see the decreased head neck offset and the reduction in the alpha angle, which ends about there. After removal of the screw and femoral head osteoplasty, one can see the improvement in the femoral head offset, and the, I'm sorry, the, neck, the head neck offset, and in the amount of roundness of the femoral head. Ultimately, this girl ended up also requiring a labral repair and as such has had a very successful outcome thus far. Although not readily uh, demonstrable on these x-rays, acetabular rim trimming may also be beneficial um, in cases of, of either pincer impingement or combined cam pincer impingement. There are many ways to approach the hip uh, in terms of uh, uh, achieving these goals. Um, most common approaches are either through a surgical dislocation of the hip as described by Gans or through hip arthroscopy. My personal favorite, particularly for isolated cam impingement and labral tears, is through a limited Smith-Peterson anterior approach. And in rare cases, for, se for severe retroversion of the uh, acetabulum, a reverse periacetabular osteotomy, again as described by Gans. So this is a very nice case. Uh, that demonstrates the significant deformity that can occur uh, in uh, pincer type impingement. This young girl had had multiple surgeries for developmental dysplasia of the hip. She still has significant residual hip dysplasia, but uh, in terms of femoral acetabular impingement, you can see this very, very clear crossover sign. The anterior wall sits well below um, the posterior wall, which is here, and, and covers a good portion of the femoral head. In this post-operative film, one can see with a reverse periastabular osteotomy that we've improved the femoral head coverage, and in terms of the femoral acetabular impingement, the crossover sign is now probably less than 30%, certainly about 25% um, of, of uh, 
of the length of the acetabulum here. So in summary, femoral acetabular impingement, or FAI, is a very common source of pain in adolescents and young adults. It may contribute to the long-term risk of hip arthrosis, and as such has very significant economic implications for our society. But more importantly, these, many of these patients have, have significant pain in the here and now, and excellent surgical results for painful hips can be achieved. One should know, however, that the role for prophylactic surgery for asymptomatic radiographic deformities has not been defined, and at this point is not recommended. Thank you so much for your attention.